What's going on everybody? Today we are reviewing a new ASIC that has come across my desk. It is the Nerd QX++. This has been sent over from Coin Mining Central. They have kindly given me this to review, so I will link them in the description below. You can get a discount from them by using my code RATHOX, as well as on any miner, basically that is a thousand pounds, you will get 75 pounds off. Or if you want something like this, like a home ASIC miner that costs considerably less, there is a discount code called Wrath Solo, and that will be in the description. Thank you again, Coin Mining Solo, for sending me this over. Now, let's get to the unboxing itself. As you can see, it's basically just a shoebox sized packaging, quite nice, with the actual name on the top. Once you open that, you are greeted with a piece of foam, but you do not need that. Now, here is where the good bit starts. So on the right here, there is the mining ASIC itself. It's small enough literally just to put on your desk. There's my hand for size. There is a stand. So we'll get the stand out first because there's stuff underneath the stand. You are given a power brick. This power brick here is rated for 120 watts. But the miner itself is only 72 watts. So this brick won't get toasty hot uh, like any other ASIC miners sometimes like the Nano 3S is 140 watts and the power brick is max at 140 watts that is why the Canon ASIC miners get warm now that's perfect you of course get the C13 power plug basically a kettle lead that you would use things on like your computer things like that Move that to one side and you get some of the actual hardware to put the ASIC miner on the little metal stand itself as well. So once I move these to the side, I'm going to get this ASIC miner out and show you. So here you go. So you've got basically a PC CPU cooler on this ASIC, which is pretty cool, which means if you fancy changing the fan, you can change the fan or you can change the cooler. I have actually seen people before put um, AIO liquid coolers, like a 120 millimeter AIO PC liquid cooler on them to keep them cool, even more so than it already does with this cooler. You get the actual display that will tell you about um, your hash rate, your like your Wi-Fi connected things that matter. And then you got the power plug right at the top. It's basically just a barrel jack, as you can see on the um, actual power supply itself. There you go. Now this ASIC, pretty small. It would literally just sit on your desk. Like if I put it like over here or something, I put it over there. It literally just sits on your desk and mines away. This ASIC miner is 4.8 terahash at 72 watts, which is equal to around about 15 joules per terahash. So it's pretty efficient. It is using the BM1370 chips inside it, which is the same as in the S21 Plus, the big, big boy ASIC. So this is actually pretty cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to attach it to the stand. We're going to plug it in and I do have my Eve power meter, which is pretty cool. It is a, pl you plug it into the wall. It gives you all the data from projected costs to wattage to voltage to absolutely everything. So I will show you that as well, but this looks pretty cool. I do like it. It also does have on the side a USB type C. So I think it's possible. Don't quote me, but I think it's possible to either update firmware via this or also um, use a USB type C power brick. Not quoting myself on that. So please check to make sure you can. So we're going to set this up. We're going we're gonna to quickly screw all these together. So I'm just going to get all the little pieces that I need and I just pour the screws absolutely everywhere like you would normally do. So it is using um, standoffs that you would for a motherboard as you can see there it uses PC standoffs. So all you would need to do if you lose one or you need more you would do that. So I think the best way to do this would be to scarily put this on the desk like so and then screw in from the back.
Right, as you can see, I have now screwed everything to the uh, ASIC itself. So it just takes six bolts that are supplied in the packaging and you get this very nice looking stand. So now, as you can see, I can literally just put it on my desk. Let's say I am just putting it on my desk as a daily use. It can just sit somewhere. It's going to be pretty quiet. It's got a PC CPU cooling fan on as well. So it's pretty quiet and it can just sit there on your desk and mine away. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go plug it in and show you what's on screen and then go to the site and everything and get it all set up. Right, before we plug the miner in itself, I have got a few extra features to show you. There is a four pin PWM header here. That means you can add another fan. So if you wanted to blow air across it rather than just from the heat sink itself, you can do that as well as on the screen itself. This bottom one will turn the screen on and off and this one will restart the miner without having to unplug it itself as well. So you've got a few extra features there that are on this little tiny device. It is pretty damn cool. So we're going to plug it in top left hand corner plug it in with the barrel jack it's going to go through its little startup sequence what we have to do is we have to basically go onto our computer go to the wi-fi settings and join its own little wi-fi and then it will go to the web gui once we're in the web gui we then connect it to our home network so that this will now be placed on our home network i'm not going to show you that because obviously wi-fi details are private but I will then get to the web GUI and then once we're on there, I will connect it to a mining pool and then we will see how much wattage it's drawing while it is mining itself. It should be 72 watts, give or take, plus or minus a few percent, as well as 4.8 terahash, plus or minus a few percent. So let's try that now. Once you have connected to the little hotspot it generates, you come up with this web GUI right here. So obviously you've got the normal things that you would see on any ASIC about hash rate, shares, efficiency, and best difficulty, especially for solar miners. That would be the same thing as on the actual ASIC screen itself as well. You have power, heat, performance, and pool information. We're gonna sort that out in a second. So if you enter your Wi-Fi settings, your primary pool, um, people in the UK would use something like solo hash. People in the US would use some pool called CK pool. Both pools are known to hit different types of blocks. So that's very good. I'm going to use my own pool that I host myself. That is on Umbrella OS. I will eventually show you how to do that. But for today, just input your host information, your port and your username. Your username would be your Bitcoin address. And then at the end of that, I have a dot and then the actual name of the device, since I will have multiple devices on the pool itself. It helps determine what it mine is doing, what and if it's all healthy, etc. So the Stratum password, usually you would just leave as X and X is determined of a variable difficulty. There are different types of overclocking features here like frequency core voltage and fan mode depending on how loud you would like the fan add a temperature shutdown in case you have this too low it will automatically shut down to save itself from any damage there are influx databases for the actual url itself like ports tokens buckets you don't really need to mess with this if you're a starter miner itself so you get a Discord alert, um, so you can actually add a webhook on your Discord if the miner itself is down. It, it will tr actually trigger a reboot as well and actually tell you. Over here, you've got the model information, how long it's been up. Um, you can actually p restart it from the web GUI as well, not just from the ASIC itself. So if you're not at home, you can Google it and actually sort it out. As well as on settings, I forgot to mention uh, that as well. You do have a current firmware update firmware and you can update the website as well if you fancy flashing it to something different or updating it but you can actually update the firmware but you do have to plug it into the usb port on this side of the nerdx q the new qx so what we're going to do is we're going to join this and we're going to go on to my pool itself and show you what that's like right so the miner has restarted and here is my public pool 
that is my Bitcoin address. So I click my workers. And in a moment, what it will do is it will boot up and show you the hash rate on the um, pool itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and check out Coin Mining Central, who is the ones, again, who sent this over to me. So I will link in the description below this web page here. This is to show different solo miners. So as you can see, I've already um, done the Magic Miner BGO2. I have now done the Nerd QAX++. There is also different ones like the Bitax Super Hex. That is 4.2 terahash, so a little bit less than this one. There's a little even smaller solo miner, which is the Gamma 601, which is only one terahash. But I will link this down below. You do get a discount on the NerdQX++ if you use the code RATHSOLO. As well as if you use the code RATHOX, you will get £75 off any miner in stock. That's over £1,000. So they've got all sorts from Elio miners to the big boy ASICs, which, as I did say before, this little ASIC does have the Bitmain Antminer S21 Plus chips inside it. There's four of them. So that's pretty cool. So as well, I would like to show you on the pool. There you go. It has joined the pool, the Nerd QX++. So it is now mining on the pool itself, as you can see on the splash screen of the miner as well. So I will just let that mine for a few minutes. Unfortunately, I could not get the web page to work for the actual dashboard. Now, this is the same for Safari, Firefox, and Google Chrome and Brave, which is another Chromium based browser. I could not get it to work. So if anyone could actually help me with this, it would be very appreciative since I am actually doing this on an iPad because I could not get it to work on the computer. I couldn't actually connect it on a computer. I had to connect it via the iPad or the phone. And I thought the iPad would be the best to show the display. As you can see, it is mining. It's gonna, the it best difficulty so far is 55,031. And it is going to slowly, eventually ramp up in hash rate. What I'm going to do as well is show you on the splash screen there are different little modes, as you can see. So you can click this little button over here and it'll go through the different modes. It shows you the actual pool that it's on, the core voltage, the overclocking, as well as if you've hit anything, how much money you would have earned. At like a block as well as the global statistics for the mining stats and then it goes back to the main splash screen as well as if I click this button it turns the screen off let's turn it back on we will refresh the page and as you can see there is 4.3 terahash a second so we are getting up there and while that is mining I will also show you on the Eve power plug how much wattage this is pulling Currently, it's pulling 92 watts, which is over the advertised 72 to 76 watts. So that is something to be aware of. It does pull more power than it does say. And then we're going to go back to the actual pool as well and just refresh again. There we go. The 4.8 terahash that you have purchased is on the network. If we go back to Eve, I just want to show you a few things on the Eve power plug, which I think is pretty cool. So it will show you the projected cost if you run it 24 seven for 365 days. This will show you the amount of projected cost per day, the total consumption in kilowatt hours, the cost of how long you've had it on, as well as of course the power consumption and you can schedule it to turn on or off. Let's say it's a lamp or a heater. You can also turn that on and off. So I use this for ASICs just to show the amount of wattage it's pulling, how much it's going to cost, and then I can equal if it's actually worth running, especially for something that is not a solo miner, that is something like a DG Home one that I do have that mines Dogecoin, and I can work out when it's profitable, when it's not. So I keep refreshing the page, and yes, it's running around about 92 terahash. Uh, sorry, 92 watts. I would love it if it was 92 terahash. But as you can see, it, it says on the actual miner itself, it's only two terahash right now. But if we go to the pool, it is running the full 4.8 terahash itself. And it's just beat its last difficulty now at 122,000. But the network difficulty is 146 trillion at this moment. So it is very difficult 
but one day maybe we can hit it it is actually over hashing at this moment in time at 5.4 but i think i'm going to leave the video here there are other features that you can do with this binary kind of like you can also replace the fan you can replace the cpu cooler but for some cool little desktop miner let's zoom out here a cool desktop miner that will literally just sit on your desk and possibly hit a bitcoin block i think that is pretty cool so that's going to wrap it up for this video hope you guys have enjoyed don't forget to check out coin mining central down below i will also leave the links down below to everything that i've talked about and hopefully we can get that bitcoin block thanks very much for watching